that when I go into You understand. I'll drink those too. The chair will call the July 5th, 2023 meeting of the City Council to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk Lesko, will you please call the roll? Will do. <coughs> Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. <clears throat> Alderman Williams. Here. Alderman Rockford. Here. Alderwoman Purchase. Here. Alderwoman Notoriano. Here. Alderman Carlson. Here. Alderwoman Connolly. Present. Alderman Donnellan. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mayor Busher. Here, Clerk Lesko. Madam Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna go ahead and read the civility pledge. In the interest of civility, I pledge to promote civility by listening, being respectful of others, acknowledging that we are all striving to support and improve our community, and understanding that we each may have different ideas for us achieving that objective. Uh, we did not have originally any proclamations or presentations signed up, but I am gonna ask that our chief utility engineer, Doug Brown, come up, Scott Rogers come up, and Matt Huff, please. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Um, first, I just want to make sure, um, you know, uh, thank all of our COP crews, um, ops teams, as well as other crews all from the country to, to just doing an outstanding job. It's a, it's, it's a lot. Um, and they're working long days, you know, 17 hour days when they're on shift. So they're, they're giving it their all. <clears throat> and just, you know, the devastation though, again, I, I'm not going to keep driving this in. So the, cause the public just doesn't seem to understand the, the, I know, I know they're, you know, they're frustrated, get that, but the devastation for the widespread across our community is, uh, you know, we just haven't seen that in decades with this kind of the wide scope and the breadth of it. <clears throat> um, and it's terrible to be without power for basically almost a week. It, it really is. Um, and the, I mean, you know, we're going to work tirelessly until we get everybody back on. Um, and we just ask everyone to stay respectful, patient, um, but I also want to thank the elected officials, too, um, everywhere uh, for understanding just how difficult the situation is and supporting our employees for the job that they are doing. Um, and so just a, a reminder I want to uh, kind of get out there is that just keep watching the weather. Our electric grid remains fragile. Strong winds or storms can still cause outages. Uh, we are concerned about what we are having tonight, um, but it looks like it might by bypass us a little bit. Um, but there was still some pretty good winds out there that could 
<clears throat> basically cause some of the tree limbs that are uh, already weakened to fall onto the power lines. Um, actually, even if no wind, the tree limbs are still weakened, they could still fall on the power lines at some unknown moment and, and the, the, the customer would lose power. Uh, one other thing too is that, you know, customers like, well, hey, I had power, then I went, went back off. Well, sometimes when we're doing repairs, we do have to take customers back off to fix something and then put them back on. Um, and we'll try to minimize that as much as we can. Um, like yesterday, we also had a, a vehicle hit a pole in an insulator failure uh, yesterday afternoon and basically it dumped uh, a lot of customers, uh, especially on the MacArthur substation. Uh, and it took you know a few hours just to get that fixed. So there's still those kinds of things that are gonna happen um, that take resources away from the restoration efforts. Uh, I think it knocked like about like 3,200 out, right? Yeah. Um, so, just some re numbers again. In the first 48 hours, we restored about 30,000. Um, we projected basically 7,000 would be out of power by the end of yesterday, and we met that. Uh, now we are at about uh, 4,800 customers. So even at the press conference, we were about 5,200. We picked up 400 just in uh, about an hour and a half. Um, and now we have power outage locations uh, for repairs of about 390. Um, that will slow down some as, as we get further along, the repairs will be smaller and fewer in between uh, to, to get them done. <clears throat> but we are still on target for 3,500 remaining out of outage by the end of Friday and 1,000 remaining out of outage by the end of Sunday. And we're hoping to beat that. Um, you know, we're still again, prioritizing circuits uh, with the largest amount of customers first but we're also trying to coordinate by quadrant. So we don't necessarily want crews driving across town like that. So we're trying to make sure that we do things efficiently as well. Um, just remember that the severity of the damage with this is it's, it is impossible to provide estimates for everybody for their areas. Uh, we, it's impossible. It, the damage is so widespread. We're still walking down circuits, uh, you know, at the individual levels and assessing what those are. And, and then organizing the tickets to re for those repairs. And then we assign crews to those. Um, but from the, st from the start, we pulled out all the stops, put out requests for additional crews, and we've received the help you know, as those crews become available. They don't necessarily, they volunteer, <laughs> but they might not be ready till two days, three days later. Um, but we're, we're taking on as soon as we can. I'm gonna have Matt Huff here, here soon really discuss the complexity of that. Um, but we have 133 additional personnel on site with 112 trucks from various areas throughout the country. CLP has 75 personnel and 50 trucks. So that's over 200 in the people in the field trying to restore power. So we've more than doubled our numbers and we have more arriving tomorrow. Um, I, I think from Ameren and Ellie Myers or is it Ellie Myers today? Ellie Myers. Okay. So uh, actually we had some already arrive that are beyond these numbers today. <clears throat> um, another item that we've done instituted, and this is for residential customers only, because um, this is the only way we can handle it, um, but we've contacted all the electrical contractors that are licensed in the city of Springfield, notifying them that we will provide them with a meter lock key if they provide a deposit. This will allow them to disconnect the overhead service from the weatherhead, this is on the person's house, on their meter, uh, and reconnect it to our lines. This will help us and the customers due to the volume of calls we are receiving to reconnect services and not take away from the other restoration efforts. Customers should ask their contractor if they have a meter lock key, if they want to be able to speed up the, their service reconnection. And I'll email this to everybody here yeah, after the yeah. meeting too, okay? <laughs> so. How was this? They can act <laughs> 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 Thank you. Um, uh, Remember though that the complexity of the repairs and the weather will affect the estimates that we've been given. Um, uh, and the, uh, check the CBLP uh, website for outage uh, updates as well as social media. And we'll try to get those you know, updated uh, on a daily basis uh, and more often as time allows. So Scott, you wanna talk about uh, a couple things? So one, one of the biggest complaints we've had from the public is our outage map. And in reality, the public tracing outage map 
it is not designed for an outage this big, we'll, we'll be honest. I don't know the, the few that have seen, I know the mayor's seen it. If you look at our internal outage map, even then you have to drill down to be able to see those outages. And so I know there's a lot of frustration if my house isn't showing up. The public facing ones just, if we put that much detail out, out there, they would get mired in the amount of information that's on it. So we try to simplify it. We will go back and look and see if there's a way we can improve this, but there's no way we're gonna do it today. So it's just something that's out there. We've had over 70,000 phone calls since this started in trying to manage that. The way our map is set up, it is predictive. I know Doug covered some of this a little bit yesterday. It's predictive in nature. So it's artificial AI, if you wanna call it that. And, and so that's some of the issues we've had. That's one of the reasons we put out the public appeal after we got all the feeders back on. If your house is still out and not seeing it, call us. I know there's been a lot of frustration over that. That's trying to help. We've made some changes to the predictive nature and we're just trying to capture all that. So I know it's been frustrating. We will go back and look at it, see what we can do better and any more information we can get to the public to help them. But it, it's been frustrating on our side too, trust us. So um, that was all I had. So Matt, you wanna cover some of the yeah, so. <laughs> Stay short. For those of you that haven't met me, my name is Matt Huff. I'm the superintendent of distribution and general services here for CWLP. Um, and I've worked here since 1999. So it's been a great place to work and thank you for having me. Um, so just in, in the start of things in a storm like this, you know, we're generally used to outages and large scale outages and things that happen. But then as we discover how bad it is and the extent of the damage and how spread out it is, we have to start to ramp up a lot of different things. And the first thing we ramp up is our supervision and our operations personnel. And then we start to ramp up our manpower and our labor in the field. And then when we realize we have to assess more, that's when we bring in more people and smaller crews and single and singled people um, to go out and start looking at these things and figure out what's wrong. So about the time that we realized that this was as bad as it was, um, by this time there maybe have been one or two people at a house or down a street or down an alley looking at different things to feed information back to our operations center so we can determine where we need to start and where we need to put the most manpower and get the most people on that we can. Um, at that point we start calling all of our, all of our different contacts for um, contractors, we call APPA, which is the American Public Power Association, and they provide us assistance through other municipalities. Um, and then we also have people on contract that we could bring in pretty locally. Um, so from there, we have to take our crews that normally restore everyone's power, and we have to bring all of those people up a level in the organization chart. And so we're taking all of our people and making them leaders. And, uh, they're gonna lead all these contract crews, these 140 people that we bring in from out of town. They're out there taking them around right now, showing them the areas and keeping them safe and getting the lights on. And so once they get to the job site and you see trucks out there working and things like this, it is a process. This thing that happened um, for MacArthur yesterday that was the 3,000 people, just to put it into perspective, that was 20 minutes worth of work but it was two hours of safety. And so when we're talking about how long things take, these crews get to the job site and the first thing they have to do is provide for their own safety and provide for the safety of the public. They have to make sure lines are de-energized and to do that, sometimes that means driving from Shields to Chatham and making sure everything's safe. They get the work done. Um, while they're around, you know, we kind of talk about the public coming out and talking to them and things like this, it's always great to see faces and it's always great to shake hands, but to be honest, it kind of slows them down. So the best thing the public can do if you have any advice for them is say thank you and, and just, just move on. That way it doesn't slow them down. One little problem we've had in the past and recently, report malicious activity. Some people like to roll up this wire and take it with them and we need it. So if, if you can pass anything on to people, please do that. Um, 
So again, like they were talking, we try to work with our ops center and we want to put these largest outages at the top, but we also don't want to focus on one area of the city. So we're looking at all of the outages on quadrant based on the, the largest outage that we have. And then we also try to prioritize, you know, special interest things like hospitals, nursing homes, um, retirement centers, uh, all these things, intersections, intersections, traffic lights, tornado sirens, um, all of those things go into consideration. Um, so there's just one thing I want to say about the city of Springfield and city of our light and power. I've worked here a long time and everyone in this room and everyone in the city should be very proud of the employees. These people are putting in a lot of work. Absolutely. And they don't see their house in the daylight. So if you see them, tell them thanks. Do you have any questions? Of course. Uh, it looks like we have some that are signed up to speak. Deb, are you done speaking? Okay. Uh, Alderwoman Notriano. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I have a map question. Um, yeah. Um, so I had the issue yesterday and today where several people called me and said, um, they were in outage and they checked the map recently and it said they weren't and then they called the call center and the folks at the call center said that they were not in an outage when they were sitting in their house <coughs> and in an outage. So some of that is what I was talking about, the predictive nature. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <coughs> so we've been trying to get those that are taking calls to not argue with people, not tell them no, just <laughs> say, okay, we'll take your information, <laughs> give it back. So what happens at that point? If the predictive nature doesn't show that house an outage, and it is, it could be a service at their house. It could be a multitude of different things. So we're trying to do is just get them to take the information, give it the address and the name, get it to the trouble clerk, they'll put it in the system, and then it will show that one house an outage. Sometimes the predictive nature, what the other thing we'll see sometimes is when you do that, the way it rolls outages up, if you get multiples, then you also end up, what we're trying, one of the battles we're having with this being so big is you do that, then it starts predicting a larger number of people out when you get two or three phone calls in the same area. So then the numbers get inflated. So then we try to stop that and then the numbers go the other way. So it's, it's a very delicate balance with an outage this big going back and forth. And I'm sure someone has thought of this, but uh, I have to ask is, there a way for you to contact the designers of this website and tell them to turn it off? Yes, we did. And that started one of the original issues of not showing everybody. Okay. So we've been going through, there's some things we can change. There's other things that um, the company has to change. And of course it's a large company. Sure. Uh, it's hard to get stuff done quickly through them, especially mm -hmm. on a holiday weekend. Sure. Um, so we're managing that work. We, we've got notes. We will have multiple debriefings after this, trying to figure out how we can change it, how we're gonna make it better, how we're gonna make the public see a better picture than what mm -hmm. we've had right now. And honestly, this is the first storm with the, with the system we've had of any size, and we see the deficiencies in it. Mm -hmm. we, we know they're there, we just haven't had a test for it, and now we have. Unfortunately, it was a bad test. Right, right. Well, I appreciate um, you already asking them to, to tweak things for us um, and anything we can do to sort of stay on them because if we're not getting power back until Sunday, um, a clearer picture is just going to be so important for folks. And, and one thing we're doing, um, I know it's on our, it's on our website. Um, Amber's been putting it out on Facebook and Twitter. We do have a list of where we're actually working and where we're planning on going. So it, that information is out there. And we're, so uh, sometimes it's hard to get it narrowed down to an exact lateral off the circuit. Mm -hmm. you know, I had a phone call yesterday with one of the aldermen and they went from this block to this block. Just the way the circuits lay out, sometimes your house will be on, across the street will not. And then sometimes they jump Lots multiple there, blocks. And so sure. that's, that's the unique thing about our system. Um, over the years as the city's grown, and you start infilling different areas, sometimes the circuits are different, sometimes the laterals are different, sometimes a fuse is blowing on one and we can back feed part of it, we can't back feed the other half. So there's different things like that. And so um, would there be 
no way for us to turn our internal maps outward facing. Okay. The amount of data in there that you see, mm -hmm. I think it would it would uh, cause more havoc. Okay. You just you like personal not information. Not personal information. Or? Just there's so much in an outage this big. Go ahead. It, it's also a security <laughs> issue. Okay. Part of it's security. <laughs> so security in terms of. Information and infrastructure. Okay, but like we can go on there now and see who's in an outage and who isn't. You, what you can see from the public facing, and th this is another problem we run into a little bit. Um, Doug was an example yesterday in a meeting with the mayor. Mm -hmm. You have to know the phone number we have on record and your house number. Mm -hmm. And if you put that in there, it'll give you an error if it doesn't come up. And, and we've seen that a lot. Um, you know, somebody's been in our house for 15 years, they had a landline, now they got a cell phone. They put their cell phone number in, but never change the number with us. Mm -hmm. So then it doesn't show up there too. So there's some of those issues that we see. So, but when you when you look at our personal one, there, there's a lot of data behind it. Sure. And it's being able to strip that down is part of the security issue. Then two, uh, when you look at the volume of, of what shows up on our map, you have to drill down into it pretty deep to mm -hmm. be able to see it. Sure. I would say even like a screen grab or something that doesn't have a lot of data for Ward 6. Personally, I know I'm sorry that I'm like harping on my own um, folks, but that's uh, what you were elected to do. <laughs> thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, just um, to know a little bit not a granular level, but I've had people asking me about certain streets or certain neighborhoods, and to be able to tell them nothing is hard. And, and that's some of the things we're gonna look at on our public side, with public facing ones. What can we do data-wise to be able to make it a better picture for when you get down to the street level? Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, one, one of the other things too, which we've talked about uh, and, you know, and, and past couple of years actually, uh, is, is going to AMI meters. Uh, AMI give you the detail, basically we know who's on and off at every location that has a meter. So it's, it's, it's instant, there's no delay, and there's, the, the, there's, there might be some predictive stuff in it, I guess, I would assume, but it's, it's, that would solve a lot of the problems, but that's more like a, a 12 million, maybe 50 million plus, I can't remember the exact number we used uh, for the budget uh, meeting, but uh, it's it's a lot of money. Um, not not a switch we can flip on. No, no. And every meter on every house and business would need to be replaced. Well, maybe not every business, but many of them would have to get replaced. Okay. You know, so it's an inconvenience for the customer a little bit, as well as the cost. Sure. Alderwoman, this administration plans on getting that information to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And just one last thing, um, <coughs> I've had calls about live wires, and I I don't think I've come across a special number for folks to call if they have a live wire that is like endangering them or their um, tenants? Normally, okay. it's the same number. It's 79, 21, 21. The volume of calls I understand has been very large. Like I said, we've had over 70,000 calls since <coughs> last Thursday. Um, if they're having that issue and they get with you, I would suggest send Doug or I a text that there's a live wire, we will make sure it gets to them. And then usually we'll grab, as soon as they see that, they will get somebody out there to make sure it's de-energized. Sure, okay. I, I appreciate that so much, but um, if there's any way at all, you could find another number for folks to call for this. The problem, the problem is when we get to a volume this big, mm -hmm. there is, we don't have people just sitting around to answer phones. Sure, sure. If we did, you wouldn't get a recording when you called 2141. Mm -hmm. That's the or only thing. You could, they're gonna do the, they're gonna get a hold of us the same way. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, well everybody um, let me know about those live wires. Thank you so Thank much you. for your work. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Alderman Rockford. Yeah, uh, Matt, this is for you. Appreciate everything you're doing, <clears throat> all your crews. Um, my question is, and it's come up a few times and uh so you we got these these pockets of people four five six ten houses that everybody's got it power around them and whether it's a quick fix or it's gonna it's a long lasting 
Is it is there reason why we don't go back and finish up these smaller, you know, if we, we send people out there? Is it just manpower issues? Is it so equipment that's where, parts? That's where it all falls into <coughs> that, that prioritization and getting that information back to our ops center. So you're going to see people on foot. You may see someone come by in a truck, a van, a car, a bucket truck, something, but they may just be there to inventory that system, ultimately to put it in that roster, if you will, of things we need to do. And then, so then we're going to look back and go, okay, in this area, we have 10 problems. Five of them are huge and five of them are small. But while you're around there, we're trying to address those while sure. we're there. But again, we don't want to put all of our resources in the southeast right. um, and leave someone hanging at Colt Road and Route 54. Yeah. Well, know, just, it, so. it helps, it helps with, the, with the, the folks that we can explain to them, you know, so they get to understand a little bit more uh, layman's terms instead of the uh, electric, electrical side terms you know they, they come out and assess it and, and take it back and, and send the information in and but these folks don't understand it you know like you got power and i don't and he does and i and they don't so again that those are the questions and it's continuous so and so you know you tell them to call 789 21 21 and and then you know they get more angry and they say i've already done it 50 times and you know and it clogs you guys up so and to answer <coughs> part of that too i know there we did have one the other day and you look at it the problem was the transformer boom. Mm -hmm. And so do I do I take a crew off of 200 people over here right. to go put one transformer up to get five people on? Right. Because that full mount of transformer is not an easy task to rebuild. Right. Sure. So it's that balance. That oh, yeah. I know, I know Pick people, and choose. people get frustrated with it, but it's a balance that we have to make that choice. Well, in, in, in what I hear, Scott, and, and is, it, is it, you know, I, I want my power on too, you know, so my power is just as important as theirs, but you know, I understand where you're coming from. And so thank as, you. As we get for a little bit further and we get closer, we'll have the crews be able to split up more sure. and be able to take care of them quicker at that point. Right. Right. So yeah, just in short, we're trying to take into consideration the size of the outage, the area of town, how many people are on it, the extent of the damage. Is it in a backyard or front yard? Do we need right. special equipment or normal equipment? And just evaluate that constantly over and over. And we're meeting three times a day and trying to go over those things. <coughs> Perfect. Thank you, guys. Any more questions, Alderman? No. Okay. Thank you. Alderwoman Purchase. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank each of you and all of the employees. Just on my way here on 7th Street, a tree fell right in front of us, um, close in Enos Park, and it's sitting on a line. So like you said, Doug, even the aftermath and the wind from the loose uh, branches are now pulling our lines down too. And I think it was so important what you just said about the boxes on our house. That's the most phone calls that I'm getting right now is that people poles and their boxes have fell off their houses and they also don't have the means to pay for them to get them back on. And I'm explaining to them, they asked about the calls, having a, a electrician come out and we're getting like mixed messages. The tree companies are coming out and saying that CWLP can do it. The, elect the electrical companies are saying CWLP can do it. So I think your email will be very helpful. And maybe Ms. Amber is very good at graphics to just explain that process um, for people on private properties. Yeah, that, and that's been in some of the communication emails I've sent. Um, I know you've had some mm -hmm. power issues yourself, you know. Um, and and well, I explained so, that. I'm sure the, there's others too, right? But, I explained that um, to them too that I've been so, personally through it and showed them the process yeah. of it. And uh, so the outage page that we have, um, there is information on there kind of what is their repair, the homeowner's repair versus the utilities repair. So there's a great graphic on there, a picture that explains that pretty well. So I would encourage anybody that has damage on their home to go to that we the web page and, and look at that. I will share that photo, yeah. and Madam Mayor, maybe this is something that you can bring up too, because there's con uh, constituents of mine that can't afford to get that box put back on. Like it cost me eight hundred dollars to do it to my home, and they saying that they don't have the funds to do that. Director Yazel has a conference call with HUD to see if we can get some federal assistance with that. Okay, thank you so much. Is that it, yeah. Alderman Williams. Yes. So thank you guys. I appreciate you, and thank you all the. You answered most of my questions that I don't have to ask a ditto to everybody because a lot of that was what I, I experienced or either I wanted to ask. However, there are a few that um, haven't been talked about. And, and the first one I want to talk about on your uh, 
personnel, like whether it's in a truck or a car or whatever, uh, some of my folks in my ward have been telling me they would run up to the vehicle, you know, in desperation, hey, you here for us? And in the conversation, that person doesn't know they're out. They says, oh, you're out of power? And then, the, you know, the constituent is saying, what? You see WLP? Yeah, I'm out of power. So I, I kind of want to be able to explain how that happens. So everybody that is sent out, they may be in the area but not know for sure who has it and don't? Well, I, 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 oh, oh, that, uh, the, I, I guess, uh, you know, not every house would be out necessarily if they go to an area. So okay. they, they're better on asking if the person's out, so that way they definitely 100% know that you're out. Um, it's, the, it's not they're trying to be disrespectful in any manner at all. They're just trying to make sure they dot the I's and cross the T's okay. on, on that. Uh, you want to add anything? Yeah, and, and most of the time, like, like during this, we've got engineering staff and, and others that are going out and looking, and we tell them, go walk down this circuit. They just know they're walking down the circuit. We're looking for switches open, broken poles, whether it's a, a mirror on a house that's off, just assess the entire circuit. They don't know if, because they don't have the map with them, so they don't know if all the houses are out or two of the houses are out or 10 of them. They're just assessing that circuit. Okay. So yeah, they, they wouldn't necessarily know that individual house was out. Okay, you know, I, I mean, that was kind of a difficult one to explain because I'm like, yeah, there's CWP, but However, some of them have come back online and some of them as we sit are still off, so, you know. At the same time, with 10,000 outages or 10,000 people out as of you know, two days ago, <laughs> you could call me and I, I wouldn't be able to tell you you're out. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, and, and we are tapping everybody that we have on that in that department, so we're sending out people that actually that's not normally their job um, oh, yeah, well, to I, actually help too, just to, so we got so much area to cover. Um, so that's probably a little bit of a hindrance maybe on in, in some things like that, but. Well, so that, that, that brings me into my second question. So uh, when the storm hit, uh, did we see some normal routine duties uh, and everybody became committed and focused strictly on a farm or did we have some activities that were normal still going on? And, and, I, and I'll give you the example that, that I was given. So uh, the crews that are crew, I don't know because I wasn't there, that was picking weeds where my constituents thought, well, hey, they could be helping, you know, clear the driveway where these branches are, and, but they're on the medium picking weeds. So I said, I thought everybody was working storm issues, dealing with trees and lines down and things like that. So I'm just asking you, did they continue working? I, I That's a that, public think, works question. Yeah, I don't think oh, had anybody doing that. so I'll wait till public works come up then. But, or, or I'll just ask it like this. So. Those kind of crews couldn't have been utilized to like clear driveways or do things, or they just continued on with their daily. Well, for us, it would be as if there's a, if there's if there's trees that are down with power lines in them, then we had to have you know uh, qualified personnel okay. to to deal with that. Once the power lines are cleared out of the way, um, if it's on personal property, then uh, yeah, then <clears throat> you know the homeowner can take charge of it. It's, I guess if it's in the street, public works sure. takes charge yeah. of it, you know. Yeah, I, I um, think yeah I, it'd be like that. Yeah, I think I kind of understand what's going on. So when a constituent sees city workers doing the weeds versus doing other stuff, all they see is city. They don't know the, the sure, differences. So I so, yeah. I, I'm imagining that's probably what happened. So I thank you again uh, for coming and updating us. Thank you, Mayor. That's all I have. Yes, sir. Alderman Carlson. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, I think you've answered most of the questions that my constituents had for me. The one question, and it, it's just clarification, it may be just sheer volume, but this whole CWLP priority list, if there's medical condition in the home, was it just, I mean, how's that supposed to work? I, I had really never heard of it before, and is it, you know, how do you prioritize because of that, or is it, was it just? When you're dealing with this, yeah. you know, probably every feeder circuit right. has somebody on it, right? So our first priority is to get all the feeder circuits on it because really without that, all the stuff below it, it, it just doesn't matter. So we have to get the feeders back on the main feeders. And then as you step down to the next level, which is like what they call the, the laterals, the backbone really of the, of the electric grid, um, then we start looking at those kinds of things to take into consideration if we can. 
but again, you know, when we're dealing with an area of 200 over here, 500 over there, and a group of five over here, you know, th there's still too many that are in that kind of that category, you know, uh, of that. Um, so, <coughs> uh, but as we get further down, that is just going to come more into play. Yeah. So it's just a volume thing. It's Obviously, a volume in a normal thing. course of operation, if it was just a few hundred out, then, that, then that, that's when this priority list would right. kick in. Yes. And you can get yep. a much smaller micro level to right. get them. Okay. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And we did, like I, I think Matt touched on, I mean, we try to get major medical facilities, um, you know, nursing homes, the ones with a large amount of people, uh, grocery stores, those kinds of things. Um, you know, those, that's what we're trying to get first and then start. Any more questions, Alderman? Go right. Okay. Alderman Donlin. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be brief. Uh, I just want to, uh, first and foremost, thank you, all you gentlemen, and the men and women that are out on the streets that are trying to make this city, put the city back in the same condition it was in prior to the storm. It is appreciated more than you know. A lot of my questions have been asked this evening, but one question that, I, that came up as you were talking is, we have all these extra crews, all these extra trucks, and will they stay in Springfield until we're down to zero? or near zero, so to speak? Yeah, so as we come along and as things start to wind down, we'll release, release them one at a time. So they may not all leave the same exact time, but they are all staying in Springfield Great. until they're done. Okay, so. thank you, thank you. And that is appreciated because, you know, these in, in Alderman Rockford touched upon it, these pockets that are out there and, and you can even, and the map is good for this, you can see where you have 84 out in one area and you can understand why that, that would be a priority over two, but I'd hate to be, you know, one of those two people and you know, to live in those houses, and it's, you know, obviously just as important. So I know you're taking it seriously, and I'm very satisfied with the answer. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Gregory. Oh, so much. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask um, on, on, on some of the trees when we when we do um, establish connection to, to the house, the tree may still be down, and 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 I think maybe we we have a wire that maybe we just disconnected or whatever, still down. How how should we go about cutting that up? Because we got volunteers and stuff that want to help people out and stuff. Um, for instance, there was a lady she she has a uh, crossing her her driveway. She does want to she's moving or something like that. Um, and her power has been restored, so I would imagine that line's not active. But I, um, we we have a lot of those situations. Are you seeing the? So are you saying the power is restored, but the line might be still touching, or an, or an old line? An old line, and 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 people are just sort of. You know, where, like, they see the line, but, you know, they've got power, I would assume, is dead at that point. But, yeah, see so what I'm saying? We can't assume anything I know. when I it know. comes to electricity. I know. So if there's wires in the trees, you honestly just have to wait. Right. You have to stay away from them, right. and you have to treat them as energized. Okay. All right. Um, and, and, and my final question is, is I, I know we have some high rises with some elevators in them. Um, normally, do, do these... Elevators have have a generator. If all three of them back, uh, you know, go down, and we don't. We know okay, that. okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, and my final question is, is just for my own personal sake, um, is there a way that I can get uh, just maybe some of the most of the addresses of the outages, like in, in my ward? And, and I'm asking that not for a, a, a speed up process of, of what what you guys are doing, um, but but more so so we can get to people, make sure they're okay. Um, the situations that I run into, even while we can try to feed people and keep calm, is really knowing where everyone's at and getting to everyone. Uh, Mayor, I don't, I don't know. Have you, I mean, I know the other day you, you shared it. Yeah, um, we supplied, but it's, it's, it's I think what he's looking for is exactly, specific address. It's not a generalized address. area, right, Alderman? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll see. And, and, and maybe if it. I got a bunch in, in, in some pockets or stuff, yeah, can we get those addresses saying, so I can just get um, some people I just don't know if we can do it by wardies enough or not. Okay. Uh, if it's too much work, don't worry about it. We'll, but I, 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 I would like two, something so like that. If you, oh, so I, it, I would distribute it for everybody. We, we do <laughs> Just do the whole city. We'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah we, we can look at doing that. Uh, I know we put together some maps. I'm trying to remember Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I know what day it was now. They're all in together. We put together some maps. They weren't necessarily by ward because our, our system isn't broke down by ward. But we put some maps together in some areas of pockets like that, and, and we can look at something and okay. get it to everybody in the okay. area. Okay. So. All right, I appreciate you. And finally, I, I, I do thank everyone, and, and I think we, you know, we got to hold off on too much thanks to the work's done, so everybody got power, and, and um, but the frustration's going to close in the more longer and longer it's out, right? Um, 
but but I, I do want to say thank you to Amber, um, um, Doug's assistant or, or, or second in command. She she does a wonderful job adjusting. I, I know I sent her a lot a lot of emails. She never never uh, got angry or anything. She 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 just adjusted and made a spreadsheet and and just making sure that we had that information. So that that's the the type of thing that we look for, the community looks for, so we appreciate y'all, just keep working. And you know, there, there's one of our guys out there, he's big as, big boy, arms strong, you know, and, and they are working hard and we see them. So um, we appreciate y'all and we just gotta finish out. So I appreciate y'all. Um, just real quick too, and, and, and you know, for emails, you know, when you send them to me, it's not that I don't, I'm looking at all of them. Right. I, I can always mm -hmm. respond, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but I am forwarding them. Um, and we're trying to set up, uh, you know, as, as, as the wind down of the, uh, you know, when they're out there assessing things, um, I mean, we're going to try to assign people to help us and, you know, more in the, in staying inside doing office stuff and, and trying to help us better assess those things and, and look, reviewing duplicate type information coming in, making sure it's in the system, making sure, uh, you know, there's not additional information being provided, you know, those kinds of things. So, so. thank you. Alderwoman Conley. Thank you, Mayor, um, and thank you, gentlemen. Um, learned a lot more tonight. I'm very excited, Doug, as soon as we can get that information to send out to people about contractors having capacity to do those connections, because that has absolutely been a concern. Um, I, I, You've kind of touched on, on the one, I mean, everyone has brought up, we, we're, we're all dealing with the same sort of issues, so the same, the, my questions. Um, but those duplicates, because I've had so many people reach out to me and say, you know, I called four or five times, I left messages, I'm just not sure. Um, you know, my response, I, I did, you know, obviously, I think I reached out to you once or twice, um, an hour, <laughs> a minute, it felt <laughs> like. <laughs> like we, and, and, and also, kudos to Amber. Um, she's, she's been fabulous, because I was trying not to bother you directly as much. Um, but. Is there, um, how are you assessing these duplicates? And, and is there a way for people, and, and I'm not even gonna talk about that outage map because Scott, God love you, defend the thing if you want to. I, I it, it has given me more gray hairs than, I mean, I didn't need any more, but. I, I don't have enough to turn gray. <laughs> I mean, if you did, it would be awful right now, right? <laughs> that, that, that map was, was painful. Um, but people who've called a number of times, who've left messages, who are still in these pockets and they're still without power, or they're in the situation where their meter box, and I'm telling everyone, I've been listening to all of your education, um, get that fixed, get your own electrician in, um, but until right now, you know, the tonight it was, and then let CWLP know so you can be connected safely. Um, is there some way that we can do, uh, just tell me you've got some, good close review of these duplicate calls so that we do know for sure there's a ticket, people are, are gonna be, are going to be reached. I'm not asking for any, any you know, I know we've heard about Amron texting people. Um, I do point out that's, that's a larger company than we are. Um, but what, how exact, I mean, just, just tell me you've got tickets for these. That's all I wanna hear. <coughs> that's what I've been telling everyone. <laughs> So the logistics, because I know these multiple phone calls have got to be difficult for you. My concern is that someone who's called three or four times doesn't have their tickets just kind of, oh, yeah, we've already got that, and now we've lost them. So as our crews go through an area, they understand to go down every street and every alley and visit every house. And if there's a house that they can't reconnect because of the damage or something or something that they need to get fixed, mm -hmm. they'll leave them a hazard card, and we keep track of all those by serial number. Okay, so address. you've been leaving hazard cards? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I haven't heard from anyone who's gotten those yet, so. So yeah. I'm if, sure they're If plenty. our crews go there, they'll get a hazard card, mm -hmm. and then that comes back to our ops center, and then we'll have this nice little stack of hazard cards that we'll have to reassess later. And that, that's one thing that we're always careful of, right? When we say we've been in your area, and then we say, okay, well now we're leaving that area, and there's still a couple of people out of power, the only reason they should still be out of power once we remove that and we decide that we're leaving there is because we can't do it. And, and I think, I've, I've, I mean, again, Amber has been fabulous with sharing information. Um, lots, I think you, CWP has gotten that message out a couple different ways, maybe not <coughs> quite that succinctly. So I appreciate that. Um, and then just one more thing as we're looking to recover, um, because we will be um, longer term looking at recovering resiliency. Um, storms like this are probably not going to go reduce in number. 
we know full well that the, we are seeing these, these smaller, more um, destructive storms. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me about underground, and Doug, we've talked about it, I know, but looking at grant funds, other funding opportunities, ways that we can start extending our reach with burying lines, especially in older neighborhoods where we've got, or we had until Thursday, massive trees, you know, lots of tree branches. Um, I have some newer areas that don't have as much old growth, but, or, or many trees at all, but there are a lot of areas with these, you know, with trees that are left, they're big, they're still there. That request has been made multiple times. I know we're not at that point yet, but I'm gonna get it out in your ears now, just as a put it on the next steps, because people, and I, I had, my, my lines are under underground, and I was without power for a couple of days, so I, I get that's not the end all be all solution. Um, <coughs> but it is something that people are asking for that we continue to keep in our minds as part of um, forward thinking planning. One, one thing to keep in mind, <coughs> When you look at our primary backbone, if we put it underground and we have an underground cable trail, that outage is much longer. Yes, and I know. that is one of the downfalls of putting so much underground. I understand. I mean, we, we can pro and con that list all oh, day yeah. long. But yeah. people, you know, people are looking at the tree, and, and I get it, I do. And I've, I've, I've mentioned that to people too. I said, this, there are, you know, there's, this is, none of this is a one size fits all solution. Um, but the request has been made to me multiple, multiple times. I promised I would convey it, and I know I've brought this up before, and, and I think I've heard that information before, so um, I, I just wanna let you know. I mean, and, and again, I, everyone I, I talk to, and I, we, we've said it, thank you to these crews. Um, to your crews, when, when Dave comes up, Public Works, um, <coughs> City owes a huge debt of gratitude to the men and women who have been working 17 hour days, I mean, that's that's a lot of time. That's a lot of hours and in a job that can be very dangerous if anything goes wrong. So um, please share our thank you. And to the crews who've traveled and are now working these long days. They're not even our people and we, we're, we're grateful very much. Alderman Hanauer. Thank you. Um, just to make sure everybody's clear that uh, on the thousand, you, you said we're, our goal is to get you, you know, to where we only have about a thousand out. Is that the people that that have to do their get their own electrician, or is that are you guys figuring that is that figured in the in the count? Because if we if we have, I mean, if we've done all our work and you got you know there could be a thousand people that don't that have the I don't know what 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 you call it the the thing on the house that weatherhead. yeah the weatherhead that I mean. Does that include that? I, I just was wanting to. Yeah, if, if, if the weather heads down or their meters off their house, and whether we've got to reconnect or if, if the contractor hasn't reconnected it, then yeah. Okay, You're going to count be, that into that the thousand. Okay. okay. But it's not necessarily all of the CWLP's responsibility that they're out. It's, it's because of the damage from a tree that hit their line going to their house. Correct, yes. Okay, no, cool. That's, that's pretty much and then the, I do want to thank everybody at, at CWLP and, and Public Works, but I guess the, the next question, and this is for um, for you guys and, and Dave, what more can we do up here for you guys and for your department, you know, as far as during this during this um, emergency? What what can we do to help you guys and to help you guys, a few little things you know, <laughs> moving forward. Now, don't be giving me a list of, of $100 million worth of equipment that we need, but I, I, I mean, I'm talking about in the- It'd Be costly, but- In the next short period of, you know, that what can we do to, to help you? You know, I, I'd say that, you know, the messaging um, about, you know, how, again, how much damage there is, I just, I think, you know, if you just take a drive through some of the, the, oh, the yeah. areas that have mature trees and you see the piles of branches that are lining the streets, mm -hmm. um, you can see the sheer, the sheer magnitude just of that and think of that, how that's affected all the power lines everywhere. Um, and uh, I know, again, I know people are frustrated. I would be too. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, but it's not because the you know the infrastructure is bad. It's not because the employees are not doing their job. You know, it's you know just back that up and, and get that message out there so they understand it. 
but also let them know that we've got all these extra resources here trying to get that job done. Um, and then these other th tidbits of information too. I mean, we can put press releases, we can put it on social media. Um, it doesn't always get to everybody though. Um, so every person that it hits, even from you, that helps too, like the, especially on this, with the email that I'll send out um, about uh, them using a contractor that, that actually gets a, a meter key. Um, that that's uh, going to help a lot. That's what I think. What do you anything to add or just Matt kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. It's just if we're out in the out in the field and I know people are frustrated, let our crews get their work done. Don't harass them. You know, come up, say hi, thank you. That's fine. Let them get their work done. That's one of the biggest things. So I just wanted to add something about you know thinking about this last group of people or we're getting down to the end and that. Don't misunderstand, CWLP and all these contractors, everyone that's here, is going to do everything we can to get the lights on, even if it's temporary. We will hold it up with a piece of rope, we'll do something, <laughs> we'll still give you that hazard ticket, <laughs> but we're going to try very, very hard to get the lights on. We're not going to say, well, we just gotta do this. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and we're also going to really dig down deep and find those customers that aren't on we're not expecting those customers to have to call five and six and seven times. We're going to make sure that everybody's on before we stop. Alderwoman Natriano. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, one more question. Uh, a constituent brought to my attention that um, not everyone is online and um, not everyone is able to check the website. Um, and then there are folks another constituent brought up uh, accessibility issues, not being able to, you know, if you're visually impaired or something like that, not being able to interpret the info that's being put out um, either by the city or by the utility. Um, just how, uh, how are we communicating with people who aren't online, I guess, um, because I am super online, so I don't even know. But um, in terms of press conferences, um, radio, I, I, I really wouldn't even know. It's been so long since I've not had my phone attached to me, so. Um, well, I, the, the mayor's uh, having a press conference every day uh, okay. now. Um, and uh, first one was Thursday, the night of the event. That's right, yeah, that's right. It started um, then. And then, um, you know, if, if, <coughs> as time allows, I try to do radio. Um, I did NPR this morning. Um, and I uh, did, uh, I can't remember which one I did Monday. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, but it's not easy. Uh, you know, if I start doing that, I got to give up doing the other things that I got to do. Plus, unfortunately, we still have other issues with the utility that we have to run as well. Um, so, you know, we're doing the best we can. Um, and, you know, the communications like that, uh, you know, the media has been getting stuff out there that we put out as well. Unfortunately, we can't go to everyone's door because there's so many of them. So it is through social media, the website, and or our media that's present here that we've invited to everything we've had. So. Mm -hmm. Yep, gotcha. Yeah. Haley, you got something? Haley wants to speak. <laughs> this is uh, Haley Wilson, your communications director. I just wanted to let you know that we did get your message and we did hear from the community. We did have a sign language interpreter today for the press conference. Thank you. We'll make sure it's that way going forward. Social media, we make sure that we add all of the text that's in the posts, I'm sorry, in the images to the posts, so that way if there's any accessibility issues, we can get it that way. And closed captioning on um, all of our press conferences as well. And then also we're doing social media, we're doing radio, and we're doing news, so we're trying to get out yeah. as much as possible to everybody. Yeah, and I would say if, if you know of a time when pe people should listen, let me know and I'll try Absolutely. to share that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the audio from right, today's- Right, on social media. Um. Audio from today's press conference will be available to all radio stations once it's processed, so then we'll be sending that out also, and I'll let the radio stations know to let us know when they plan on featuring that sure. as well. Awesome, thank you so much. Alderman Ridpath. So, Doug, we talked today about uh, the distribution of uh, resources because of the magnitude of the people we just brought in. Could you reiterate the, the numbers that we're, we just brought in and 
you know, the, uh, the pocket thing is, the, is everybody's problem. Everybody's got pockets where they've right. got very little access, but you know, I know we're trying to get the big numbers on as fast as we can, but we still got a lot of people out there that, that are hurting and need help. And uh, so if you could just re reiterate those numbers. Yeah, those, uh, um, I'll just make sure I don't lose. <laughs> um, so the, the count that doesn't include uh, the contractors that showed up this, like today or this afternoon, was it? Um, and then the ones that are coming tomorrow, we have 133 additional employees uh, or personnel, 112 trucks. <clears throat> so we have over 200 people in the field. That's since this With started. our people and them. Um, so, and then uh, I believe uh, maybe is it Amron? Amron tomorrow. Amron's bringing in how many people? 14. They're bringing in 14 additional people tomorrow okay. with their trucks. Um, they, I mean, of course, they had to do their local area first, and then then they can come over. And today, what'd you get on today? Um, yeah, I don't know how many people? Yeah. How, how many did you put back up? No. How many did you get back up? Oh, uh, let's see here. It's well, it's just let's see here. I think yesterday was about seven thousand, and now we are uh, under forty eight hundred. Um, one second, let me just look. Some times passed. It, it, yes. it, we we gain some and then we lose some. You know, I mean, at, there's another outage, so uh, looks like so it's it's back up to fifty eight hundred right now that are out. So. I mean, just within an hour, it's went from it's gained about, uh, you know, uh, 900 people. So there, there must have been something happened. Could have been like the tree that that fell. Mm -hmm. um, those right kinds of line. issues that are happening out there right now, real time. Yep. Um, but you know, they were. It was good to see under 5,000 there for a while, at least. <laughs> well, thank you. We know we know you guys are working as hard as you can. I I talk to your crews all the all the time, all day. But they get tired of hearing from me like you get tired of hearing from me. <laughs> but uh, you're doing a good job, and uh, we appreciate all you guys do. Thank you. Thank you to the three of you. And I can say as mayor, I've been out meeting with the IBEW crews that are out and all of our electricians and our people that are in helping our electricians. And I've been out with Public Works multiple times, and I've let them all know, not just this administration, but the city council thanks them for all their work. I've been Thank telling you. them that. Yes. Thank you. Chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the June 20th, 2023 City Council meeting and approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Those opposed, aye. please say nay. Motion carries. The chair will now entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council first reading of ordinances into so the record of this council meeting. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Say nay. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading of the consent agenda into the record of this so council. So moved, Mayor. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. The chair is now going to entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion on that? Okay. We'll now vote on that. All those in favor of the motion, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no. And the motion carries 10 voting yes, none voting no. Agenda numbers 2022 2023-386, 2023-173, 2023-201, 2023-202, and 2023-203 remain tabled or in committee. Any action on any of these items? Okay. The next item on the agenda is 2023-281, an ordinance approving a payment to Troxel and company in an amount not to exceed $4,600,000 for a property insurance policy for 39 city of Springfield properties for a one-year term for the Office of Public Utilities. The chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2023-281 on final passage. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion on this ordinance? No one has signed up to speak. All those in favor of the motion, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no. And the motion 
carries 10 voting yes, none voting no. The next item on the agenda is 2023-288, an ordinance approving the appointment of Kristen D. DeCenso to the Springfield Local Liquor Control Commission. The chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2023-288 on final passage. So move. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion on this ordinance? Yes, Mayor. Alderman Williams. I, I just want to uh, share with the council that, you know, I have read the ordinance and, and, and talked with folks about the ordinance of the difference that I brought up between the two former alder women. And I'll just say that um, that same ordinance or uh, code says that this council does have the authority to, to override it or do their will, you know, as you will. I just want to remind you, Mayor, and my council members that um, whatever vote you take, it just, we, the people are looking at this and they're seeing one uh, former alder woman being very, treated very different than another alder woman. Uh, so I won't be supporting it, but I just wanted to say that. And, and yes, we are, if there's six votes, it passes. But I just wanted to be on record saying that I, I, I've done my due diligence. Thank you. Yes, sir. Alderman Donnellan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I wanna thank, I, I think it was Alderman Rockford that brought up the issue last week about that whole three-year language and, and it was uh, worth looking into. I always appreciate that, but it caused me to go back and look. Uh, the, alderman, the alder person you're referring to, alder woman you're referring to was uh, alder woman Gail Simpson. And, and uh, you know, I, I, it kind of is funny how a question like that helps you reflect back and see, see what happened. I did vote for Alderman Simpson as I plan on voting for Alderwoman DeCenzo uh, here today. And, and I think we have, it's clear in the code that uh, the intent is to make it so the council's involved in those decisions and they just can't happen on their own. So anyway, I encourage a by vote. Any other discussion on this ordinance? Okay, the voting is now open. All those in favor, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no, the voting. Oh, I'm sorry, I hear yes. <laughs> and the motion carries with six voting yes, four voting present. The next item on the agenda is item number 2023-290, an ordinance authorizing an amendment to the redevelopment agreement with Dog Eared LLC, ordinance number 265-06-21, amending the time limitations with the project to be completed no later than December 31st, 2023, and requested funds in the amount of 75% of the costs, not to exceed $100,000 for facade rehabilitation and easement at 413-415 East Adams Street for the Office of Planning and Economic Development. The chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2023-290 on final passage. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion on this ordinance? Okay, all those in favor of the motion, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no. I'm a yes, I don't know what the... Sticky right. today, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, the motion passes with nine, but nine voting yes, none voting no, and one is not in the chamber right now. The next item on the agenda is item number 2023-291, an ordinance authorizing an amendment to the redevelopment agreement with Vegas Line Properties, LLC, ordinance number 263-06-21, amending the time limitation with project to be completed no later than December 31st, 2023, and requested funds in the amount of 75% of the costs not to exceed $100,000 for facade rehabilitation assistance <coughs> at 215 South 5th Street for the Office of Planning and Economic Development. The chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2023-291 on final passage. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion on this ordinance? Okay, the voting is now open. All those in favor, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no. And the motion carries with 10 voting yes, none voting no. <coughs> the next item on the agenda is item number 2020, I'm sorry, 2023-292, an ordinance authorizing the amendment to the redevelopment agreement with 629 East LLC, ordinance number 264-06-21, amending the scope of work to include roof replacement 
time limitations with project to be completed no later than June 30th, 2024, and requested funds in the <coughs> amount of 75% of the costs, not to exceed $362,000 for facade rehabilitation, architectural assistance, easement, and roof replacement at 629 and 631 East Adams Street and 123 South 7th Street for the Office of Planning and Economic Development. The chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2023-292 on final passage. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion on this ordinance? Okay, the voting is now open. All those in favor, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no. And the motion carries with 10 voting yes, none voting no. <coughs> the next item on the agenda is item number 2023-297 an ordinance authorizing the purchase of a bucket trouble truck from Drake Scruggs Equipment Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $175,000 for the Office of Public Utilities for emergency passage. So moved. Second. second. All right. We have a first and a second to place agenda number 2023-297 on emergency passage. Any discussion on this ordinance? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please vote yes. All those opposed, opposed please vote no. And the motion passes with 10 voting, I'm sorry, 11 voting yes, none voting no. The next item on the agenda is item number 2023-323, a resolution continuation, continuing the declaration of local state of emergency through July 12th, 2023 for emergency passage. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion on this ordinance? Okay. The voting is now open. All those in favor of the motion, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no. And the motion carries with 11 voting yes, none voting no. That'll conclude what we're voting on today. Is there any unfinished business to bring before the city council today? Alderman Hanauer. Uh, yeah, um, before um, Doug left, he asked me to let, let us know that uh, the number has gone up a little bit. Uh, we had a blink. We had to take some people down, apparently Brown the Lake. Um, so right now it's, it's at 4,700. Uh, but that's expected to go down because they had to take them down to fix it to get more people down. So just wanted to let everybody, we wanted to make sure everybody was aware. It was the same ex explanation he gave us before about having to take people right. down and then right. put them back up to get them going. So, so he just wanted to, he wanted to make sure everybody was aware of it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Alderman. Alderman Gregory. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Ms. Val, just to follow up. Uh, she uh, stepped out. Okay, I, she'll hear me. But um, <laughs> um, I, I also want, <laughs> I also um, would like her, um, we had a conversation about, you know, this this uh, beater thing, so I, I'm glad that all the woman person spoke on that as well. But uh, also tree funding and, and rental assistance, I know we'll be speaking with HUD and, and if any way we can uh, make some of those things. And I say that because, you know, um, people have been, been displaced and those who have been um, lucky enough to get a hotel room or other arrangements, you know, unfortunately, I'm on limited funds. Um, it's not much wiggle room, and but rent has, has to be paid. And um, I've been contacted by several people who do rent and, um, they're still expected to pay and, you know, uh, we'll have a struggle at that point. So I, I just want us to look at all options for that, um, as well as um, for down trees, because everyone won't have the ability to get some of these bigger trees cut up um, that are laying across the front yards, backyards, et cetera. Um, and any assistance that we could give would, would, would help us speed up the process of um, restoring our community back to what it was. Thank you. So those that are displaced aldermen can go to the BOS Center and the American Red Cross is set up there for 24-7. And it is, if any of you in the council chambers want to go view that, it is amazing what they have set up over there. It is really, really amazing. Um, so they can stay for free there and get food and drink. And then also um, for those who are homeowners that need help with debris removal, not renters, just homeowners, they can contact the Illinois Baptist Disaster Relief Team. They are here. The phone number is 217-341-2416. Can you and say that one more time? Can you slow down? <laughs> I talk fast, Alderman, sorry. 217-341-2416. And they are in the community now, and they will assess, and they are here just to help homeowners with the debris removal because there are homeowners who cannot get to that, as you are stating, Alderman Gregory. I know. Thank you. Thank you so much. And my, my, my follow um um, just request um, from Mr. Fuse, Director Fuse, um, but you ain't got to get up or nothing. I, I just would really like um, some type of schedule. I, I, I know um, similar to 
you know, I don't know if we're gonna follow um, pickup as our normal tree branch pickup or if we're gonna do some um, extra ones or, or, or how we're gonna get around to, to each um, to area. Um, I get a, you know, as we restore, you know, um, the community I represent is already um, had some uh, um, some obstacles to overcome, so this has made it you know three times as worse. So, um, you know, I can't say I tip my hat to many of our community that have cut up those branches and they have got a lot of them to the curb, which is you know, I, you know, the last couple of years I've been working outside, I've been cutting grass, cutting trees and stuff, and that, and that's no small feat to cut these trees up. It's no small feat to move them and cut them up, even with a good chainsaw. So. Um, I, I, I know the guys are working hard and, and around. I just want to try to um, give everybody more information on when they will see some crews in their area picking up these branches and stuff like that um, as we recover. <coughs> I appreciate it. If I may, Alderman, sure. uh, at 6.30 this morning, the Department of Public Works uh, <coughs> deployed 10 debris collection crews. That includes one crew from the Illinois Department of Transportation, and we are greatly appreciative of their efforts. We deployed at the same time, 6.30 this morning, three cutting crews. These are all from the Forest Tree Division, and these crews uh, work exclusively right now with uh, bucket trucks, uh, chainsaws, uh, cutting tree limbs that are hanging, cutting up uh, trees that are down but are uh, on, uh, uh, they're not really in the right of way. We've pretty much mm -hmm. cleared everything out of uh, the streets, but uh, the sidewalks and whatnot. So they've been concentrating <coughs> on that. Uh, a good way that we keep track of our progress is the number of loads of debris that we have hauled. Uh, as of about 3 o'clock this afternoon, we had hauled 157 truckloads of debris. Uh, our total since last Friday is 590 truckloads of debris. Our folks are working hard. We're cutting it up as fast as we can in, uh, in trying to get, uh, get it out there and get it cleared. We have activated the branch collection map. If you take a look at uh, Public Works on the city uh, website, okay. uh, we're basically using our snow control uh, grid system. If you take a look at it, you'll see which grids have crews that are active in it today. There were 10 that were active today. Those are in the blue. Those in the yellow do not have crews that are active uh, in, the, in those areas. So that's the way you can keep track. I can't tell you what time they're going to be cutting a tree no, no, no. In, I, on any I, no, there's just I no way I can do it but I can't tell you what part of the city they're going to be working in today so I would encourage everyone <coughs> to check uh, the, the branch uh, the branch map was activated and okay. that's the uh, the best way that we can let folks know what areas our crews are in okay and then my follow up, my final question. I'm sorry. What a six time. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, just, just, this is real quick though. Uh, so I, 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 I did share that we were hiring a um, TDL um, hiring um, on our crew, and I know we have put some of those in, and and um, not only this budget that recently passed, but last budget. So, so, you know, um, I would encourage our, our office of budget and management. Usually, I'm. Uh, you know, to really look at that, and it, it, you know, I, I I don't expect this to help for for immediately, but down the line as we continue on, I think it's a good time to get some guys in. When I put that out there, it's probably at like 75 shit. So a lot of people are interested in joining our crews and and getting in on some of the good work. Um, so if there is any more opportunities that we can hire, um, certainly, um, then if, if we can get those out there, I think we get, should have four spots out if we haven't filled them. Well, Alderman, uh, I can tell you, we're having a really hard time getting the vehicles for them to drive. Oh, yeah, you told me that, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we put some money for that, too, so hopefully it comes in quick. <laughs> All right, thank you. <coughs> There's a shortage of vehicles out there. Director Fitch, do you have anything else? No, unless there are I, any other I, questions. I got, I got a question. Yeah, I got, I got <laughs> well, I'll questions. go in order if you'll yeah. chime in, and then sure. we'll let him. You can just don't go far. Alderman Williams. Yeah, and mine's just for maybe you. I don't know. So I've heard a lot of discussion, and I'm I'm happy pretty much about the tree removal. I, you know, I had 12 trees on roofs, just like land on the roofs, and they did Facebook posts, and, and a bunch of guys that come over and you know, got rid of some of them. So I'm down <laughs> to, to four houses with trees on roofs, and, and I'm glad you gave me this information. But then the key is home ownership. These are renters. You know, these are poor people 
poor renters who could never be able to remove those trees. So I'm looking for resources so that I, I don't just scapegoat <coughs> like, like send them to Ethan. <laughs> You know, it's like community relations. You need to go, you know, talk to them and let him find places. So if anybody knows of anybody, I don't know if it's a, a tree service or, or whatever, these are, a couple of them are elderly people. And, but they rent, and, and then my problem is, again, what we always fuss about is the out-of-state landlord. So if they got the power restored, which was the good part, all these homes with these trees, do have power, so it isn't interrupting the power, but I know that those last four homes, those trees just can't stay laying on the roof forever, because it's probably a code violation at all, but, um, so if, if we know any tree service or somebody that knows how to get the, them last four trees off the roof, uh, Director, I appreciate it. I, I know it's not your responsibility, it's not even the city's responsibility, because it's private property. I was hoping this number you gave me, but then I just, in my ear, I'm hearing you saying ownership, you know, the owners of the home. I think that company is afraid to uh, go onto property if the owner hasn't authorized oh. it. You know what I mean? Well, I'll or just have them still have a discussion and maybe, yeah. who knows. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Uh, Alderwoman Notriano. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing this is unfinished business. Um, and this is not for you, uh, Director. <laughs> So, yay, I guess. Yay, um, so, I, uh, someone just brought up uh, getting people paid back for um, the something, I don't know. And it jogged my memory of a question that I wanted to bring up, an issue that some folks had talked to me about, uh, it was are we going to be able to do anything or work with any outside agencies to compensate folks for um, food lost in their freezer because of that, or fridges because of the out, outage. Um, so I don't know, uh, not everybody knows my life story or whatever, but I'm originally from uh, New Orleans and I am a Katrina survivor. And um, one of the things that they, they did, I, I think um, it was through like the link like EBT to give money on that. And then I believe the Red Cross gave like $250 cards or something. So I, I don't know if you thought about that or anything, but I know that would be helpful. The, the folks that do have link cards, I guess Ethan wants to talk about this. So I'm gonna, is that why you're coming up? All right, well, let, if I won't steal his thunder, we're gonna let Mr. Posey talk about okay. it. Okay. Don't go far, Dave. Go ahead, Mr. Posey. First things first, Alderman Williams, I do appreciate you sending people to me. <laughs> you know, we're always there to answer phone calls. Sometimes people just need to hear someone to talk to them on the other line of the phone, and the Office of Community Relations will always be here to do that. Now, for people that have EBT, a SNAP card, a link card, you can call the Red Cross. They'll have you call the insurance agency, and they will replace that for you free of charge. Awesome. Now, for our people who do not fall under those circumstances of having EBT card, SNAP, or a link. If it tells you anything in front of me here, I have a plan, it's 96 pages, I'm reading through it all tonight for a long-term and short-term relief plan. We'll be working on putting together a long-term relief group to not only find ways where we may be able to get SBA loans to help small businesses, individuals who are both renters and homeowners, but also to start putting in place a structure where we're training people in the community to be able to uh, react and respond in disaster relief efforts so we can help supplement what the Red Cross is already doing, help supplement what Public Works and TWLP are already doing from any standpoint outside of what you need to be certified for to deal <laughs> with, you know, down power lines and trees. So I don't have a, a exact short-term solution right now for replacing food that was lost. Um, I've been talking to a lot of people I spoke to an elderly member of the community today who is in a walker. She has a <coughs> fridge full of food that has expired. She just got her power back on. What I suggested to her was I provided her with the non-emergency line for the fire department to call and ask if perhaps some firefighters could come out and help her remove the... Uh, Not necessary. Call the office of the mayor. Look up We've got number. another number for What's that now. We've yes. got an answer for this. Ethan Posey, 217-789-2200. Call the office of the mayor. Yes. Call the American number. Business Club has agreed to go help people who cannot get that food out. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Big shout out to American Business Club here tonight.
Uh, Budget Director Metzger, do you have anything from the IEMA standpoint for folks who lose food that you want to talk about? She's been meeting with IEMA on the money. Yes. Okay, uh, just just to reiterate, um, the I I know this is a disaster on a different scale than Katrina, but um, that we we gave or we were able to find money for um, or the the government was able to find money for uh, <coughs> everyone, not just folks who were on uh, link, because. Um, as many of you all know, um, families today on average are unable to handle an emergency of $500. Um, so we really have to be thinking about everyone right now being in a tough spot um, and <coughs> not being able to make ends meet. Okay. Alderman Rockford. Yeah, Dave. Yeah. Um, <coughs> appreciate all you're doing, your crews. I've spoke with Mike Disco about some things, you know, when it comes to, you know, the parking, no parking, yes, you know, sir. police order type stuff. And uh, so th there are areas, and I'm going to use the North End because that's what I've been looking at the most, you know, where, where people can get in. And I know you're uh, the, the least amount hit, maybe in the West End of, the, of town. I know everywhere's been hit, but no, it's in the we're, the, we're the least least amount of damage is done. Where, where wires and, you know, I mean, you got to pick and choose, and I, and I get it, but there's there's areas there that the crews can get in there. And what I'm leading up to is, have we reached out to CWLP? You know, they, they've got grapple trucks, they've got dump trucks, they've got, you know, put things aside. I know he's got branches down in, in, in talking about Ward 1. they got problems out there, but we're still dealing with electrical lines through things, and, and uh, uh, I, I just, I, I, wanted, I want to try and understand how we're attacking this, I've done it before. I've, I've, you know, been there. I'm trying to help out, but uh, <clears throat> it's all we're in a state of emergency. It's all hands on deck. So, you know, water department, if it if it's not an emergency, why don't we have them over with with the the, the trucks and the, and the loaders and, and and take advantage of everything that we can to get uh, get done. All, all hands on deck is uh, is certainly the way that we see it. In fact, some of our uh, sewer department crews and personnel have joined uh, the, the traffic, the streets guys who are who are primarily handling all of this. Um, I can answer that. Alderman, the grapple trucks for City Bell PR with their crews. And then the county is looking for additional ones for us to put with their crews. Um, but we do have bobcats and we do have inloaders and we do have operators and we have trucks that we can, we can you know, because it's, it's one person on a grapple truck with the driver and they, they work together. You know, and then if they're, if they're not using a, a dump truck, let's let's take it. No, the equipment's no good if it's sitting. We're, we're you using know. we're using all the all the equipment. We've even had to uh, uh, contract uh, to rent uh, a couple of end loaders. Uh, we're running the equipment hard. We've got a number of trucks that are down. Uh, that happens every single day. Uh, fleet maintenance is able to bring some of them back. We had a tailgate fall off one the other day, and they had to weld and weld. We're using the equipment uh, that's available to us. If it's a maintenance issue, if uh, we've got like the grapple, uh, I read. Uh, about three o'clock this afternoon, uh, it was leaking. Well, some of my operators say they keep their own wrenches uh, with them so that they can make some quick repairs uh, on site so we don't have to tow the, uh, uh, the equipment back to fleet maintenance. Our guys are doing the very best they, they can with what they've got. A lot of our equipment is, is beat up. Yes, sir. We're using it fast and they're doing the very best they can with what they've got. Yes, so uh, every, everything that we've got that's running is being used. But also, also when, when, when it's a state of emergency, all I'm saying is, is reach out to the lake services and the water departments and, and everybody we can get on board. You know, uh, There's going to be times when you're not going to be able to make it out to, to the uh, neighborhoods out by the lake, and, and you've got lake services out there that, that we've done in the past where we, we have picked up in, in public works areas, so to speak, but that's just, you know, it's like a shared service type thing. And, uh, you know, not every, you know, if, if they're available, if the water department can give up trucks and in, in, in manpower and, and operators, you know, I just say take advantage of it. I understand that. Uh, there are still water issues that they have to attend to. <coughs> lake services. Uh, I haven't been out to the lake lately, but I hear they've got a lot of trees down as well. So I'm sure they're, 
as bu every bit as busy as uh, public works. CWLP has deployed their own workers to help them, and they have so many, uh, so much, so many pieces of equipment out. They don't have enough, so we've reached out to the surrounding communities asking to borrow equipment. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Redpath. Well, Alderman Rockford kind of hit a lot of my issues about about the lake. The biggest problem we're having at the lake is we have. Um, we still have wires in the trees, and we can't do anything with the trees with the wires in them. And uh, um, there's on East Lake Drive, and I think one of my constituents is sitting here, who has been. I'm, I'm not kidding; it's the biggest tree I've ever seen. It's it's full. Of, um, our team went down there uh, the other day to see if we could start cutting it up, and we could not because there's still wires in it. That's the biggest problem that we're seeing, and we got people that actually the neighbors are all gathering together trying to help each other, but we can't get in those trees with the wires in. Uh, Apl Asp is it Asplerman or whatever it is? Yes. yes. That those guys came by, but they never came. They stopped to look at it, but they then they left and never came <laughs> back. And that was a, a common problem in, uh, around that, that. And people got a little frustrated because they said, look, they came here and assessed it, but then they didn't come back. And I know we're doing the big areas, but if they can get the wires out of the trees, you know, then we can start cutting the things up and get them to the roads. Uh, that is an issue that the public works crews deal with every day. Right, I know, uh, I know you do. The, so. the limb is down and there's, uh, there's power <coughs> lines inside of it. The protocol that we follow is we don't touch a limb or a tree that has power lines in it unless there's a city water light and power line crew at that spot. And that's when I took Lake Service's uh, tree crew down there and they said, we're not getting in it, not with the wires in it. They just won't. So it's, a, it's frustrating. But frustrating is, is, is a small word. So, so thank you for that. And, and you guys are doing a good job. You got, I see the trucks flying around, so you're doing it. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a testament to the men and women that work for Public Works. They are highly dedicated professionals. This is hard, brutal work, and they're at it <coughs> 12 hours a day. They start at 6.30 in the morning, and they finish at 6.30 in the, uh, in the evening. As I said, we're running the equipment, the equipment hard. Uh, maintenance is a, is an issue, but uh, everybody's working. Everybody's doing their very best that Thanks, they can, man. and we appreciate the support of everybody on the city council. Alderman Williams. Yeah. So I wanted to bring back up the same question I asked Director Brown about uh, the crews that were in the medium doing the, the weeds versus eliminating some of these big stacks at least in Ward 3. I mean, we just got tons of them because uh, we had the older trees and all the breakup. I, I, I do commend you guys for getting them chopped up and placed and stacked. But then, like I said, when the constituents seeing them doing something like that, when, when I think those crews could be getting rid of the uh, stuff that's on every other corner. Well, the particular group that you're speaking with, uh, speaking about are summer help. These are people who are not, uh, they're only with us for the summer and there is an extreme limit to what actions they can take. They can't wield a chainsaw, they can't drive a truck, they can't run a grapple, but they can water flowers and they can pick weeds. There was one full-time employee that was with them driving the truck and supervising them. As soon as the summer workers finish their eight hour shift, the full-time worker would then uh, parks the truck, gets in the dump truck and uh, d uh, picks up and, and uh, dumps the debris. So, so were these grown-ups or were these teenagers or when you say they can't they're, do all those they're things? They're summer help, sir. They come, they're with us for the summer. Age of the summer help. I, but these particular individuals, I couldn't, I couldn't speak to it. But I, I checked with uh, our uh, super, uh, supervisor today, excuse me, superintendent, uh, to find out where we were deployed. We had a couple of concrete finishers who were working on a concrete job, uh, but the only other... Uh, unit that wasn't uh, picking up debris and hauling it were the folks that were dealing with the uh, the flowers on Wellbars today, and that's summer help. Thank you, sir. Alderman Carlson. I think this question may be for Scott Dahl. Scott, you don't escape all this, but <laughs> I, had two P I had two constituents Ward 7 call over the weekend about, and I know there was the golf tournament, they felt like they had called a couple hotels and they felt they were getting gouged a little bit. So I don't know if you had any reports of that or can address that at all, but I just wanted to pass that on on behalf of a couple of constituents. I don't know the price of hotels. I haven't rented one in Springfield. Well, I mean, I had not heard that, so this is the first I'm hearing that. 
Alderman, uh, I've certainly checked into that. I've been in constant communication with the Springfield Hotel Lodging Association. We have five hotels that are closed due to no power on uh, South Dirksen Parkway right now. So that's really where our communication's been. Um, so, you know, our, our average rate in the city has gone up in the last couple of years. I mean, we're averaging about $105 across the board. So again, you've got to take that all in consideration with the different tiers. Yeah, they didn't, I asked what specific hotel, they gave me a rate over the phone of 300. That's from the, from the constituent. I said, what did they ask? They go, well, they were asking 300. And then, you know, so who knows? But I just want to pass it on. Yeah, and certainly at times, you know, the rates do fluctuate. Oh, yeah. And again, that's an average rate over, let's say, the course of a, a, the first half of the year. But uh, yeah, I, I will certainly check into that. Um, and, you know, if they want to call me as well, um, they can call me at the office and we can have a uh, conversation about it. All right. Yep. Okay, that's unfinished business. Is there any new business to come before the yes. council? Alderwoman Purchase. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm getting a couple text messages. So on Saturday at 2 p.m., I know they announced it earlier, but um, it just reminded me what Alderwoman Nutriano talking that there's free produce boxes being given away at the YMCA, as well as, too, with people not having power, they do have summer camp openings, too. Instead of having the kids at home, bring them on down to the YMCA on 4th and Carpenter, and there is financial assistance for those who need it. And then shifting over to tomorrow, it's music on the Y Block. I missed my hosting last Thursday, but I'm glad we weren't out there. But please come out tomorrow from four. To, I mean, from six o'clock until about nine o'clock, and then we have First Friday this uh, Friday too, from four to eight p.m. So please check Downtown Springfield Inc.'s page, and that's um, something that we can do while some people still don't have power. And I just want to say just thank you to all my colleagues. Everybody has been really pitching in. Um, we did about over 19,000 loads at all in one the past three days. And I get a little teary-eyed because people really had a need for washing their clothes while they didn't have power. Every, our downtown businesses came together, uh, brought barbecue pits out, and I was so happy I got to eat a steak. <laughs> Um, so the community really came together in these last three days to help out. And so we're continuing to work together and putting all attitudes aside. And it's really, really helpful to see that going on. So thank you. And kudos to the YMCA. The YMCA opened their doors on Friday morning to be a cooling center and charge phones. And so our Y really stepped up and they even opened up on 4th of July for us so that our citizens had a place to go. So the YMCA has really helped the community. So I just want to give them a shout out. Now we have citizens to address the council. Jonathan Carter, are you here? Okay, we're gonna move on to Alice Ramey then. Not tonight, she said. All right. <laughs> Look at you. Matt Shearer. Madam Mayor, congratulations to you. Thank you council. Sir. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I am here to propose that the city allow electric hydrofoil surfboards to be operated on Lake Springfield. If anyone has any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, Decatur has allowed us to do this. It is a municipally operated lake. Uh, my insurance, one million per occurrence, three million aggregate is good enough for them. I don't see where there is a, a disconnect between their operation and ours. Uh, I would love to answer any questions about any concerns. Uh, if anyone has any, I ask that you please allow these personal watercraft as they are determined to be by, by the Coast Guard and uh, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources to be operated by those who choose to use them on the lake in a safe way That's my piece. Okay, looks like Alderman Rockford is signed up to speak. Where, where would you have these at? Are they personally bought and they store them at their house or, or are they licensed with the city? Is it, are they licensed with the state? Are they, I hear you say the Coast Guard. Um, so I, I know this issue was, was brought up back when I was out at the lake working and, and sure. uh, uh, I just, I, I think they, they need to be legalized, you know, per the city. Sure. Have we, have we, Done, done all the paperwork and the groundwork and I have 
Okay. Uh, you, sir, are the only older person that I have not spoken with personally. I think everyone around the council can say that I have spoken to each of them. Corporation Council, and you uh, uh, being removed, I have not spoken with you. Uh, but I think everyone around this table, Horseshoe, here, uh, except for you, I have spoken to each of them individually at length. <laughs> they, they are probably tired of hearing about it, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but yes, they are registered. Uh, they, I have, I would love to speak with you uh, after my two minutes because I could go on waxing poetically about this for hours. Well, I, I'd like to, I'd like to talk to you at length. Sure. You know. uh, if I'm allowed more than than the two minutes, is, is there anyone after me that would like to speak? Uh, you know. Two thirty-seven. You guys. <coughs> okay. Yeah. No. And, and again, they are they like are deemed to, information from you. Uh, sure. I, I, we've talked about it a little bit, but. They are deemed to be personal watercraft, just like jet skis, wave runners. They are registered as such. I have personal liability insurance for them. Uh, I mean, you name it. I have U.S. Coast Guard approved life jackets, helmets, radios integrated into the helmets so we can communicate on the water. We identify specific areas where we operate away from people. Well, while we're teaching people how to ride these, that's what we do. I am super. I am allowed to provide supervised instruction. I do not rent them. I do not give these to people to go wild on. I am there with them side by side. That's how we do it. I have two surfboards. I take people out in specific areas away from other people, teach them how to ride these safely. Uh, I am American Heart Association certified CPR. I am also an EMT, I intermediate certified by the state of Illinois. I have extensive certifications. Uh, if you would like to speak at length, after this, I would love to talk with you. I think you might be the only one that doesn't have the full. Uh, well, I, I, I do understand it. You know, I've talked with security. I've talked to all of the sure. red bath. I've talked to people around the lake uh, back when I was working out there. Uh, so you, you, you're you going to train these people, and then they're on their own after the fact. No. So you, you're going to be with them every time they get out? Absolutely. My insurance does not allow me to rent them. I have to be there with them side by side. So you're the sole owner of these these, these yes. Uh, yes, indeed. crafts. Yes, sir. You, you, so you're going to rent them to them, and then you're no, gonna I don't. I don't rent them. I provide supervised, guided instruction in the safe operation of electric hydrofoil you surfboards. Can choose who do get them. What's so that? Speak. Do they buy them? How did? No, okay. no. They so you own all these. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. I own two surfboards. They come to me. I give them a lesson on how to operate them. I'm there side by side with them. If you'd like to, I'd, I'd be happy to give you a free free one. You uh, want to try them? Video of this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let me know when. Yeah, video. Yeah, video of that. No. Open invitation to anyone around the horseshoe. No. Yeah. Any so anyone who wants to try them. You know. No, I don't need that. Yeah. Uh, but no, I just. Yeah, I'll get I'll get a number from me afterwards. And, sure. And meet you. you know, Absolutely. Talk. And and that's what I'm here to do is is. Surfing is now an Olympic sport, right? I think Doug Knight, uh, I'm about to run out of time here, but Doug Knight is, is about to instill a wave facility at his uh, location. Surfing is coming. And I'm here to provide the safest way to learn how to do that. People can buy these, these craft, right? And just show up on Lake Springfield. What I'm trying to do is teach people how to safely operate them before you get 20 people out there riding these things like crazy people and crashing into boats and whatever. And God knows what's going to happen. That's what we would like to do is provide a safe way for people to learn how to operate electric hydrofoil surfboards on Lake Springfield. Decatur says it's okay. We're good enough for them. It seems to be the same setup, if I'm not mistaken. Corporation Council might be able to to Not chime yet. in on this at we a later date. We have another alderman but. who wants to speak to you. Alderman yeah. Hanauer. I think that's the, the you just <laughs> mentioned it, that's the, the biggest problem. If we if we allow you want to have them, we could get 20, 20 private people that have them, and whether they learn how to drop, ride them or not, they don't steer very well, and we have a hard enough time with the, with the amount of boats on our lake. And I, I, I'll be honest with you, I was lake patrol out there, and I, I've got a lot of hours behind a boat, I boat down at Lake of the Ozarks, which is crazy, and they have them down there. And some oh, yeah. of those idiots down there, they're, they they scare the crap out of you with on those things. I completely um, agree. Uh, my concern is if we allow you to do it, then it opens Pandora's box. 
and then everybody can, you know, well, we let you do it, so this guy gets to buy one, and this guy gets to buy one, and then they're out there, and somebody's going to get hurt. I'm, I'm, it, our lake is, is I, I just don't think it's conducive for, for these things, um, especially from on a private sector, you know, from the private sector. It, 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 or if I may speak. I mean, I'm not going to sit here. I'm just telling sure. you my I point. Mean, I've seen them. Am I they go to? fast as heck. And sure. I mean, Larry, me and you ain't getting up on one. I'll tell you that right now. There's no way. <laughs> and and <laughs> if, if I'm allowed to continue, there is nothing stopping anyone from yeah. buying these individuals. Yeah, they can't come on the lake. We, we ban don't have to they're allow not allowed. They on the are lake. not banned. I think Alderman Redpath proposed an amendment, but he pulled it. But these are determined to be personal watercraft. Those are allowed on the lake currently. Uh, the Coast Guard has no, determined these no, to be not. personal no, watercraft. No, they're not. They, they got to be licensed with the city of Springfield. Mr. Sheriff, sure. can I, and, and can I recommend that you make an appointment to see Corporate Counsel Mordock or one of his associates in his Absolutely. office if he's tied up? Because we have him in every meeting with IEMA and all the other groups we're meeting with regularly. So he could delegate if he needs to, and then they could get the information so they could look into it. Absolutely. And what is the best way to do that? Because I think, Madam Mayor, I, I emailed Call you. Call Corporate Counsel's or? office. Okay. Call the Office of Corporation Counsel. Okay. I think you know how to get a hold of them. Thank you. Alderman Redpath. Oh, wait. No, sorry. I skipped. Alderman Williams. My apologies. Uh, I, I no, go ahead. You can go next. No, I, I, I like oh. the proposal. Oh, you like that arrangement. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Alderman Redpath. Uh, yeah, it, they're, they're not going to be allowed on the lake because CWL, CWLP has deemed them dangerous. There's a lot of accidents that happen out in the California area, and I can tell you that uh, they're not here to speak on it tonight because the director had to leave, but he has a whole file on it. We put together a committee and, and talked about this thing in depth before we even met with this Mr. Shear. So I can just tell you that... that I think you I'm, left that meeting about five minutes in. Well, listen... Well, you have you, to you've spread it. enough lies and rumors in, in this town. You okay. attack the director. You attack me on personal uh, on social media, and so don't start lying because I got people that were sitting in the room. Okay, we'll you did you did talk to the Department of Natural Resources, which I was a director there once before, and I can tell you, they're not they're not for this thing. They they know it. They're they're classifying it as a, pe uh, a personal watercraft. Indeed. Yes, but they're but they think it's as dangerous as we do. You should lobby the no, Coast Guard going, to change that, that then I would, I would sponsor recommend. An ordinance. I'm sure. not going to argue with you. I'm going to call. Here's what, here's what we'll do is uh, there's new aldermen on the council, so we'll ask you again to make an appointment with corporate council's office, and then we can inform the new members of the council what was found through the ordinance, through this discussion, and through Director Brown. So Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Any other discussion? The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn the regular city council meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and second. Oh, wait. We have, other we have a speak. citizen who wants to address the council. Oh, okay. My apologies. Sorry, Sorry sir. I called today and they said I could just come in and be asked and then walk off. Okay. Sorry. As Alderman Redpath said, I live on Lake Springfield. My name is Greg Vogt. Awesome. I live at 1023 East Lake Shore Drive. Okay. Our power has been out since last Thursday. I've called numerous people. Most of you may or may not know the city doesn't really care about us because we're CWLP. We rent our land, we're on lake leases, we can't cut trees down. We can't do anything without people's permission. So we have a tree that fell, big tree, hit a pole, took down about five other poles. We are sitting out there with no power. We are a neighborhood of 12 houses. Eight of us are down, a lot of old people, a lot of people that need help. Well, we're not going to fall into your three, four hundred. We only have 12 houses, but 66% of us are down. But yet nobody, nobody seems to be able to give us any accurate information. We have this website you keep directing us to. My house has been a crew assigned since 333 on the 29th. So I have a crew assigned to fix it, yet nobody has been out there except for asphalt, showed up on Sunday. They looked at it, there's wires in the tree. They said, well, they're not live. I don't know who Carl Tega is. They called Carl Tega with CWOP and he said, well, if the wire isn't live, don't touch the tree. So we still have a tree sitting in a front yard 
with poles, transformers laying in our gully. Nobody has come by and done anything. They cut the trees down at the park. Center Park is my neighbor. They were out there today. They removed the pavilion that blew down in the storm. They tore the whole thing down, hauled it away. They've cleaned up the parks. They've cleaned up the fishing walls. They cleaned up everything. They haven't touched anything in our neighborhood. It's disappointing. It's very disappointing. We don't need food. We don't need water. We need our air conditioning back. We need our houses back. I have a beautiful bow down the lake. I can't use it because I don't have electricity to lower my lift. You put Rock the Dock back. You put all the inference down there to get them fixed. I can't go to Rock the Dock because I can't get my boat down there. You know, what, what are you going to do? I understand the people. I wish Doug Brown was still here. He's at our meetings all the time. I know they're out there working really, really, really hard, and I appreciate everything they're doing, but why? Why seven days after this can we get an answer? He, has, he had a call at 7 that he needed to get on, so he got on because we have three calls a day with his crew so he can see in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening what's going on. We have approximately 5,000 customers without power. I hear you. I know you're concerned, and you're one of 5,000 about, and I am sorry. Um, we're doing the best we can, sir, and I think you heard their talk today, the City Water, Light, and Power folks. We have more than double our crews here to help get power restored to our customers who do not have power. And there has not been an outage like this in 50 years, so I do apologize. Xfinity is there two to three times a day. The truck pulls up in front of our house to check to see if the poles are back up so they can remount their equipment. CWOP and the city cannot even call them and let them know what work they've done. They physically have check sheets. They come by, guys from South Bend, Indiana, guys from Chicago, guys are traveling from all over the place, but yet we can't communicate with any of them to get anything done. You know, I just don't know. You want us to leave and come to the BOS. We have no police presence. You say you've had 500 dump trucks come by? They have, because they drive by my house every day going to Lake Services to drop all the trees off. But yet nobody comes by to do any security, anything. Anybody who drives down East Lake Shore Drive sees that I have no power. I have nothing there. I'm here today because my kids are there. Yep. We hear you, sir. I'll you make know, sure that CWLP has 1023 East Lake Shore Drive on their list. Oh, they do. But when are they going to get there, Mayor? Sir, I can't answer that. I wish I could. Why can't you after seven days? He said he has, you know, accurate information. We're not even on that list. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this is the mess I have inherited a little bit. Um, Doug Brown asked for AMI readers, which would have expedited our process in the past, and they were not approved. This administration will get information to these council members so they will see the cost of those AMI readers. Um, those AMI readers allow City Water, Light, and Power to see immediately who doesn't have power because it's electronic. Unfortunately, it is not right now. You all think it's advanced, but it isn't. So I do apologize. It, it is a, I, I met with Senator Durbin this morning, and he said, Mayor, when the ice storm hit in the 1978, I was without power for 10 days. He said, this is unfortunately what happens. So I understand and I feel your pain and we're doing the best we can. What well, you get on and you have news conferences. I don't know if you guys know, we don't have power. So we can't see any of that. Nobody comes by our houses. You know, the Red Path has given me calls back, but even he's starting to avoid me because he has no answers. I don't to think he's avoiding you. Oh, he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'll give one shout out to Ethan. Ethan, in my time of distrust, took my phone call and he actually called me back. The information he gave me wasn't the best. He told me my power would be back up by last Sunday night, and I'm still without it today. So I just, I'm frustrated, and I know you. everybody in here is trying hard. Everybody in here is doing a good job, but your information is, is 1970, and it's 2023. I don't trust any of the information because I am a computer person. I could go into that system, and I could make it look like 2,000 people are down, or 20,000 people. So how many people are actually down? We were in here, it went up 1,000 people in five minutes. So what's accurate, what's not? I don't, you know, I just don't know. And I'm, I'm frustrated because it's, you know, everybody's sitting in an air-conditioned house with the TV working. Not and everybody, there's 5,000 people. Well, 4,100 and something, <laughs> if you, I mean, yeah, I understand, to the last sir, time I looked. We will work on it. Yeah, so I just think you guys need to understand, you know, where, where the other end of it is.
I mean, we pay a lot of taxes. We pay our bill every month. Let's get it fixed. We're yeah. trying to. Anyone else want to address the council? Can I get a motion for adjournment? So moved. So moved. Second. A first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, please. Thank you. We're adjourned. Thank you for the uh, gavel. Clerk, let's go. No worries. Alderwoman Purchase, do you have power yet? All right, good for you. I'm sorry that I would have uh, checked on you had I had the opportunity.